Hello everyone and welcome to this radiotherapy physics webinar. My name is Dan Murray and in the next 20 minutes I'll provide a quick overview of what radiotherapy physics is, how it works and ultimately the difference it makes to cancer patients. A little bit about me firstly, um, so I'm glad to be a lecturer on the programme. Um, I joined in September of 2021 and I actually completed the radiotherapy physics undergraduate programme in 2020. Since then, I'm a clinical specialist as a, uh, in MRI-guided radiotherapy. Um, my job title is a dosimetrist, which is the name for one of the job roles within radiotherapy physics. Um, and I'm also a guest lecturer at the University of Oxford. So a quick overview. We'll look at how current methods are targeting and treating cancer at the moment, uh, what radiotherapy physics is and how it works to help treatments too, um, how we can translate theory into practice within fundamentals of medical physics and particle interactions into cancer patient outcomes and treatment. We'll look at careers within the field, opportunities in terms of further study and research, and where the field's going to go. So within radiotherapy physics specifically, the influence of advancing medical technologies, imaging, and AI are going to completely revolutionize the way that we can target cancer within the next decade or two. So firstly, here is a summary of cancer statistics in the UK as of about 2018. So within the last 40 years, it's excellent to see that cancer survival in the UK has doubled amongst nearly all cancers. Um, but again, some cancers better than others. So the way we approach breast and prostate cancer now, they have a one year, so we've got one year down here, um, they've got a one year percentage there. So 96 and 94% of breast and prostate cancer patients survive their disease for one year. And again, their 10 year and five year survival rates are also readily improving year on year, which is excellent. However, as the graph also indicates, there's some unmet need within certain types of cancer that we definitely need to invest more in and this is where radiotherapy physics and other treatments as well are going to heavily contribute to this within the next 10 years. Namely pancreatic cancer, lung, brain, stomach and esophagus. So these sort of five are ones traditionally that have been hard to treat and hopefully with personalization of cancer care, so personalized drugs, radiation therapy, we can improve that outcome going forward. It's also important to highlight as well that four in 10 cancer cases can be prevented and there is a huge amount of money and resource that's going into preventative measures and cancer screening. Um, and that is going to also make a dramatic difference to that overall survival percentage. For example, being smoke free, drinking less alcohol. We've heard all of these things in the wider media anyway. These things are going to reduce your risk. And again, we're then going to need the therapies like cancer, uh, cancer treatments, surgery, chemo, radiotherapy to improve this survival further. And this is where radiotherapy comes in. So with complex machinery, such as a linear accelerator, we can accelerate X-rays to a really high energy level to the order of a million times more powerful than your standard uh, wrist or leg X-ray um, to interact with cancerous cells or electrons inside the body. Um, this happens directly or indirectly as find the diagram here. But this essential process is we're using high energy radiation to damage DNA within cancer cells. And the ultimate aim is to cause enough DNA damage that the cell is permanently damaged or completely kills itself, so it dies. And this is essentially how we can mimic this process of ionization that we see in the lab or in physics experiments, but within the body. However, the huge caveat is this process also, it also occurs within healthy cells as well as cancerous ones. So we're stuck in, in a bit of a balance and there's gonna be a lot of problem solving with this within radiotherapy physics, and that's called the therapeutic ratio. So high doses to the tumor, we want as much DNA damage uh, via this radiation dose to the tumor cells as we safely can. So what level of dose can we give to, let's say, so a prostate cancer, um, and what dose level is gonna cause those tumor cells to die? Versus, like we've got here, 
this red region is the intense region of radiation, like for prostate. And then we've got these other little volumes here, which are your organs. So it is a constant balance between how much dose we can give the tumor, but how little dose, so as low as reasonably possible to the, to the organs and healthy tissues nearby. So as a conflict, it's overall cancer survival and tumor control versus quality of life. And you know, a caveat here would be that it does depend on radiation dose. So what's the total dose you're prescribing to a, to a cancerous tumor, where the tumor is and its type. So staging, is it malignant? Is it likely to spread? Is it metastatic? Um, and the proximity of, those tum of the tumor or tumors to the healthy tissues and organs nearby. So this is where radiotherapy physics specifically comes in. As a dosimetrist working behind the scenes, we create a treatment plan that is personalized to every single patient dependent on their anatomy. So if they've got multiple organs surrounding a tumor, we need to be able to balance dose to the tumor using complex computer systems to calculate if the dose is going in the correct location. And then we're also measuring using these computer programs how much dose is going to the organs and is it too much? And if it is, we need to try and reduce that. So an overview, here is a radiotherapy bunker. So it has radiation shielding around the outside. And this is our linear accelerator. And this machine generates those high energy X-ray photons, as I mentioned earlier. And again, this machine has the handy uh, tool that it can rotate in 360 degrees. Um, it can take medical images. Um, using onboard imaging, which is which is excellent. I'll put it on there. There you go. So we've got an X-ray and we've got the detector out here, an X-ray tube and a detector. So they can take patient images whilst they're actually on the bed and even rotational images too. So this is absolutely critical before they start the radiation beam on to make sure the patient's in the right position. And patient positioning is also an essential uh, factor because we can have a perfectly personalized treatment plan outside the room. We can have this computer system say, look, hey, it's completely safe. They're going to have an excellent tumor response here. But if they're even off by three or four millimeters, sometimes even less than that, um, you might miss the tumor entirely and end up overdosing an organ, which is, again, completely undesirable from a clinical perspective. So here is a 3D outline of the patient. They're lying on this carbon fiber couch, which is, is incredibly strong. Um, their head will normally rest in this little blue head rest here and their feet within the foot wells there. So again, all of this setup will be personalized to the length of the patient, their anatomy and their comfort status as well. So are they very mobile or not? The next step would be that they position, so the radiographers now, so the people who will be in the room, the specialist healthcare practitioners who will help deliver the radiation, will position the patient using these lasers that are within the room. And they'll line up the target area. So here is the, the light guide. So it's saying anything within this region is gonna get some dose. So we need to make sure that's lined up appropriately before each treatment. So that's gonna be consistent. So for let's say they have 15 treatments, they'll go through this treatment process that many times and it'll be the same and consistent throughout. So this is a, a hollow 3D volume of the patient's external contour here. And I'll turn on some medical imaging. So this is a CT scan. So how a medical image works is it takes a slice at a time. If I go sort of this direction here, you can see that it takes a slice at a time. And as I scroll through, we'll get an in-depth internal picture of where the anatomy sits within that specific patient. So some patients, again, will have changing weight, height, uh, bladder filling, uh, and their bowels and their intestines will be in different places, um, even within the order of minutes, as well as days and months different. So when we're looking internally, it's important that as a dosimetrist or a practitioner in radiotherapy, we can create for the computer a 3D volume of each of the organs we, we are concerned about. And doing so will allow us to limit the dose to those organs so the patient has a brilliant response for their radiation to the tumor, but also they're not going to have some nasty side effects like for, for prostate cancer in this instance, um, 
overdosing the bladder or the rectum can lead to you know urinary flow issues uh, impotence as well so a lack of sexual function and again this is something we want to try and preserve for the patient as much as we can so if i switch on here so this is the bladder and rectum in 3d so we would draw um, on the medical images a slice at a time and then we end up getting these 3d organs so knowledge of internal anatomy is essential here and you work very closely with specialist doctors radiation oncologists who will guide you in this process too and they will then contour the doctor will contour this whole region here which is our target region and again this is to account for different movements but as you can see there the target and the organs sadly overlap so ensure to ensure that the tumour gets the correct dose that's actually going to have a therapeutic benefit, is there a point in doing it? We need to have a big enough area to ensure that we've encompassed spread of the cancer that we can't see. So this means it's typically a little bit bigger than we'd like. So the prostate itself is here, but the edge of the target volume is a little bit wider. And sadly, this does result. So if we turn the dose on here, uh, it does result in an overlap. So if we scroll through, the red area is a region of high intensity and the blue is sort of your lower or scattered dose. So anything within that red region there is going to get the full dose that's been prescribed. But as you can see, sadly, the bladder, some of the bladder is in that red intense region and so is the rectum. And what we'll do in treatment planning is say, the organs will have a dose limit and a threshold. So how much of that high dose can they receive before, if you go above that point, that they start or may experience side effects, longer or short-term side effects. So that is in conversation with the doctor. So sometimes the tumor might be quite aggressive, so it doesn't matter necessarily um, if the organ or one of the organs has a bit too much dose, if the tumor is gonna be more of a problem. Whereas if you've got younger patients, you want to preserve their quality of long term life and quality of life. So you'd rather maybe have slightly less dose of the tumour and have your organs uh, receiving little to no dose. So as a dosimetrist, you'll work with these specialist doctors all the time. It's, you know, 60 percent of my day job um, and it's excellent problem solving. So you'll get a weird and wonderful complex anatomy um, and you'll be amazed with the plans you can come out with. Here is a nice 3D representation. So you can see there that the bladder, the, the base of the bladder here, the posterior section, um, has got quite a lot of this red, red or intense dose, and likewise with the anterior aspect of the rectum. Again, this will be all personalized to every patient. If you were to, live, to deliver the same radiation to another patient, it would look completely different inside the body. So having a targeted and personalized approach for radiation therapy um, has to be there, it's essential. Um, otherwise, it would be unsafe to proceed. For example, if the patient was set up incorrectly or a different plan was selected that was maybe for another patient and you were to shift the couch one centimetre further down, you then look, you're getting some high dose in the bone and you're nearly missing the tumour at the bottom here as well. So undesirable. So it's a multidisciplinary process. So you'd coordinate with the doctor. They would confirm that your treatment plan is, is desirable for their patient. You then work with the radiographers to basically say, hey, we've got a three millimeter margin of error here. Let's try and set up the patient as accurately as we can. And then prior to treatment, we'd perform some quality assurance measurements as a dosimetrist. We take measurements into different sort of dummy patients, or we call them phantoms, um, to make sure the dose is basically being calibrated correctly within the machine and the output is as we expect. So why does this all matter? So for the radiotherapy physics program, if any of these um, attributes apply to you, this course could be an excellent stepping stone into the NHS for you. So an interest in human biology is excellent if you like problem solving, if you like working as a team, as well as individually, this course could be an excellent choice for you. As well as research and innovation, as I'll go into shortly, there is huge opportunity for progression within this space. And as, as one short statistic, um, every student within the last 15, 16 years of the course running um, 
they've uh, they've we've had a hundred percent employment within six months of graduation so extremely desirable highly skilled nhs practitioners and the nhs will be absolutely glad to have you because ultimately your role as a dosimetrist will make a huge difference to cancer patients and their lives. So I've said there, you'll be an expert in radiotherapy physics, you'll have brilliant understanding of human anatomy and radiobiology, and it's globally recognised. So across the world, there's dosimetrists in America, Australia, and across the world. There's excellent job satisfaction as it's very varied. So treatment planning, research, quality assurance, you can assist with patient positioning as well. And the mould room, that's a an area that specialist dosimetrists go into. So work as part of a wider team, there'll be specialist roles. So within my own clinical practice, I'm an MRI guided specialist. Um, and again, I've just put at the bottom there, the influence of AI advanced imaging technologies and combination therapies is gonna revolutionize the way we approach radiation therapy in the next 10 years. This is the area that I work in. So it's one of those linear accelerators you saw earlier combined together with an MRI scanner built in. So you can take unlimited MRI, live MRI. So you can see, let's say if there's a tumor in the lung, you can track the tumor in real time as the lungs move due to breathing. You can create a new treatment plan every day. So if the patient lose or gain, loses or gains weight in between treatments, um, you can create a new plan on the fly there and then that's personalized to that patient. So what we've seen already is you can have opportunity for hypofractionation, which essentially means still the same level of dose, but in fewer treatments, because we've got the added safety of this motion tracking. Other things that you can get involved with as well, if you're keen in artificial intelligence, this is gonna be especially prevalent in the next five years. Um, auto outlining organs and auto outlining tumors is gonna be a huge area for development. Uh, combination therapy, so what's radiotherapy with immunotherapy going to look like? We're already seeing chemo radiotherapy and many other studies and clinical trials you can get involved with. And again, I put a few others here like SGRT and FLASH that feel free to look into in your own time. There are some excellent treatment uh, modalities coming out very soon. And lastly, I'd like to thank you for listening. Um, if you'd like to, me to answer any questions, here is my email address. I'm more than happy to be approached prior or during or after the application uh, if you've got any questions, and I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you very much.